Got it. Hey, ladies. You know, you know what we should do, uh, Michelle. We should put together, uh, start putting together a list of, um. Hi, ladies. How are you? Let me go ahead and switch my camera. You don't want to see my head. And let me get you guys on my um, my other device, too. This meeting is being recorded. So. Here we go. Good morning, ladies. All right. I think it's, uh, oh, it's 1031. Let's go ahead and get started. So let me just grab, and I, I had a class last week and it was such a great class. And then I realized I hadn't hit the record button. I got, I got logged on early. And so um, I, I got logged on early. So I, I paused it because, you know, I don't like having all that dead time on there. And then somebody goes, oh, and we'll be able to watch this. I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. And then I realized, oh my God, I had never restarted again. So we are recording. Um, you also should have gotten a, uh, I don't know why my other camera is not working. You should have gotten a, um, uh, the, the pre-recorded version of the class too. So you should have that already. But here is what we're going to be working on today. And if you got a little kit, it, it would have looked, well, it doesn't have all this stuff, but this is all the stuff I have for mine. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump this out. And you know what would be great if I had this sample? Hang on one second. Hey, Karen. Or can you grab the sample to take the, the watermelon one? The picture right there. The watermelon one? Yeah. It's right there, right where you were sitting. Thanks. All right. Sorry about that. So these are the colors I'm going to be using. I'm just going to go ahead and take those and put those to the side. And, and um, you know, if you want, ladies, before we get started, um, you know, I'm just using mine decoratively, but if you're going to be giving this to somebody, you could, if you have Insulbrite or Insul, uh, yeah, Insulbrite, you could cut another piece of Insulbrite to use that in the middle of this, or you could cut another piece of batting because that one little piece of batting, I mean, it's pretty thin. So it's totally up to you, but if this is something you're going to, that's going to be utilitarian and you're going to be using, that might be nice just to put something a little bit thicker. And while we're stitching, you can go get another piece of batting if you want. That'll be an option for you. All right. So let's go ahead and let's get started. You should have a piece of batting and I'm just going to hoop this up. You've got a couple different size options. You could make this smaller. 
and put it into a um, four by four. You could do it five by seven, or you could do eight by eight. And eight by eight is the size that I cut for you today. I love it with this. I don't know. To me, that was my favorite, but I did cut it just like the kit where they had the, the striped fabric, which is really cute, but I really love the kind of the green swirl fabric that they had too. So let's grab our stabilizer. And I cut your stabilizer in case you didn't have an eight by eight hoop. I did cut it big enough for an eight by 12 hoop. So go ahead and hoop that up. And while we're hooping that up, turn your iron on. We're gonna press a couple of things. So go ahead and turn on your iron. And it's a piece of cutaway that you have. And you'll have a little left if you, you can use it for your four by four if you want later on. I always like to hand tighten and then I have a hoop tightener too. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna grab some of our fabric. So right here, you're gonna take your two back pieces and you're gonna fold them in half, wrong sides together and press well. And that's what's gonna give you your little envelope back, just like that. So grab your two back pieces. If you're not sure of the size, the back pieces um, are going to be 10 inches by 10 inches. So they're gonna be your two big squares. So go ahead and grab these. And I pressed mine just like they had it in the picture. So I pressed mine so the stripes were going like this and not like that. It's up to you, it doesn't really make a difference. It's gonna be the back, but you wanna press both of these. And if you have best press and you wanna give it a little shot of spray right on the edge, that'll make it really crisp. Go ahead and put that there. And we'll just give that a little press, both of these. Miss Rita's here, let's let her in. So we're gonna start out with that. We're gonna hoop our stabilizer and let's go ahead and load our design. And we'll come over here. Any questions, ladies? Are you good? Everyone's good? All right. Where is? Yeah, just one second. All right, sorry, my spray was, uh, had gone missing. So um, if you wanna go in here, we can go ahead and pick out your design and you're gonna see it has three different sizes. So make sure you pick the right one. I'm gonna be doing the eight by eight and that's gonna be the biggest one. And I know I have a background picture here. I have to get rid of that on another screen. Check your size. So it's going to be 7.68 by 7.68. If you don't have that one, you want to go ahead and reselect. Um, and then you can go ahead and hit set. I'm going to get rid of my background image. I'm on the luminaire, so I can just go in here and just hit off. And there, my background image is gone. I always like choosing my hoop size too. And I know this is going to be centered to my 8 by 8 but it's just a habit. I'm gonna go into my settings button and right here, I'm gonna select my eight by eight hoop. And that way I know exactly how much room I have. So you can see that there's my eight by eight outline right here. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna put that back. And the best way to put it back if you do move it is to just hit move and hit the center button. So we're back and centered.
All right, we're gonna go ahead and say embroidery. And um, I am going to put a white bobbin in there. I don't think the color is really gonna make a difference right now, but let me go ahead and put a white bobbin in. Go ahead and put that in. Slide your hoop on. And the first thing it wants you to do, carriage is gonna move, is it says, um, you're going to stitch the batting placement line directly on the stabilizer. I'm gonna use a color I can see, so I'm just gonna use this gray. When it tells me to use like, um, you know, any color you want, but it's something I wanna see, I usually use a light gray. It's my favorite. And go ahead and stitch out the placement line for your batting. Um, I'm gonna spray my batting. If you look at the instructions, they show it with a little bit of tape. I'm just gonna spray mine. I have in my spray tent here. Now, don't forget your batting has a right and a wrong side. And the wrong side is the side we're gonna put down and it's a little nubbier. It's like not as smooth as this one dimples in and the wrong side dimples out. So if you ever get bearding in your embroidery, it could be that you're putting your batting in upside down. So I'm gonna just go ahead. I have my spray tent set up right here. If you haven't gotten one of these, you should get one of them. I absolutely love them. And don't be too heavy handed. This isn't your 80s Aquanet. Just a little bit of spray so you can get it to stick down. Melinda, no, um, no crazy. Uh, I don't know why that didn't stop. I stopped. I must have hit this screen. There we go. No uh, fingernail tips going on today. No special embellishments to add. Only, only of my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that still cracks me up. Okay. You're gonna put your batting down. Now that you have your batting down, it is going to stitch out the template. So we just put our batting down. You can tape it if you want, tape outside of the embroidery field, stitch the piecing template. Do not trim your batting at this time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. If you have any dark threads on your batting, pick those up because you don't want those to shadow through. And we are gonna be putting down the background fabric, which is the white fabric with the little red dots. I am gonna give mine a little shot of spray to the back. So again, I'm gonna put it in my spray tent. I'm just gonna give it a little shot of spray. And for right now, color doesn't make a difference because anytime you see that box with the little lines, that means color doesn't make a difference. However, that being said, I usually don't use like a super dark color unless my fabric's really dark. So I still have my gray in there. So what it just did was it stitched out the template and this is this shows you the order in which we're gonna be laying everything down. So first thing we're gonna do is put that white piece with the dots. So place the background uh, piece one fabric right side up center over section one. So grab your fabric and it's going to get centered right over here, the square in the middle. So you can kind of just place it so it's kind of equally inside that template. And again, you can tape if you want. First thing that it's going to do is it's going to do a placement trim line right on the top. So just go ahead and hit start and grab your applique scissors, your favorite scissors. So 
So here's my little, look at, here's all my little special favorite tools. So usually I'll go with my snips if I can. If those aren't hardy enough, then I'll go with my double curved, uh, either my four and a half inch or my six inch. So we're gonna go ahead and just trim away and you're trimming above the line. Don't trim below the line, above the line. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. If you have to take off the whole hoop, take off the whole hoop, whatever works. I'll try and slow my roll because if you know me, I'm a fast trimmer. And I've gotten to the point where sometimes I can't even remember if I'm left-handed or right-handed with my scissors because I cut with my right hand. So I'm a lefty, but I cut with my right hand so often that I'm confused now. So these are the pieces that we're gonna be laying down next and they're all the same size. If you were to do a whole bunch of these, you really could cut your fabric. Um, you don't have to cut it as liberally as these are cut. You're gonna put this face down on the line. So here's your right side down, wrong side up, center it to your stitch. So your stitch is here and here. What you don't wanna do is do this or do this. You wanna just center it to that stitch. You're gonna have a lot hanging off on either end, but sometimes you don't. Slide your hoop back on. It's gonna do your quarter inch seam allowance. Just go ahead and hit start. I'm gonna give mine a little shot of spray. You can take it out of the hoop if you wanna press it. You could tape it if you wanna tape it. When I'm doing flip and fold, this is the only time I spray in the hoop. Am I lying? I think that's the only time. I think, I think that's what I do. I will put my hand here. And if you find that you are heavy handed and you get spray everywhere, don't do this. But they do make products too, like uh, cardboard cutouts that you can lay down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just a little bit of spray. I mean, you can barely hear my spray coming out, but I like that because I feel like I get a nice fold and it stays and I want that nice, clean, crisp, fold back. I'm gonna put this back on. And what I just did was um, I just folded it back. And right here it says you can take it out if you want, um, flip and press your fabric. So you can take it out and take it to your iron and give it a little press. And that's just folded back. Now we're gonna do the next piece right here. So it's gonna do your trim placement line. So just go ahead and hit start. If I'm going too fast, let me know, ladies. I feel I feel my coffee's kicking in. <laughs> Belinda can relate. <laughs> so Patrick bought us this new coffee maker and um, I love it. It really is fantastic. And he goes, doesn't it make just an amazing cup of coffee? And for me, I don't even notice that. Um, we're going to trim right below that line. I'm not a coffee connoisseur, but I just, it's so easy. The coffee thing is so easy and it is, it, it's so good. So we're going to trim this. I don't want to lose anyone. So if you need me to slow down a little bit, I can. We're just having fun, ladies. I don't want anyone stressed out. How are we doing? So all you did was trim right below. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the top. All of those pieces are going to be the same length. I think they're like two and a half by nine inches or two by nine. You're gonna lay it down, right side down, center to your stitch line. The edge of the fabric should be right on that stitch line and you are just gonna stitch it down. That is your quarter inch seam allowance. Miss Charlene, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm just trying, I'm getting the, the files and stuff downloaded. So okay. I am just learning my do you need so, me to send you anything? Nope. Uh, well, okay. what, what are they in for the brother? Is it EXP? P-E-S. P-E-S. Okay. Thanks. Yep. You're going to be P-E-S. Miss Dawn, how are you? 
And uh, Charlene, I can catch you up. So just let me know if you have a question where we're at, just ask. All right, I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray. Some people just hold it back. That's fine too, whatever works for you and whatever you're comfortable with. I know me, I just like everything nice and crisp and clean. And so that's what works best for me. I was talking to somebody and they're like, oh, I can't stand spraying. And she's like, I just hold it back. So if you wanna just hold it back, you can do that. You're gonna put it back on. So what we did just now was we did our placement, our trim, laid our fabric down, quarter inch seam allowance and flipped it back. Now we're gonna do the left side. So we're gonna go ahead and do, this is your placement trim line. So you're just gonna stitch it. Who is bingo? Do you see your mute and unmute in the bottom left corner? Is there something there? Or you can hold your space bar. If you hold your space bar. Oh, here comes hubby to the rescue. IT, IT, please come down. Uh-oh. Now, now our picture disappeared. Okay, we're gonna just trim that away. So trim to the left of that line. There we go. I see hubby again. <laughs> Are you on a computer? Because if you hold your space bar, I think that'll unmute you. Or in the bottom left corner. I don't know if you're on an iPad. I'm really bad on iPads. And this doesn't have to be perfect, ladies. Charlene, did you get it done? Do you want me to send it to you? I can multitask. No, no that's okay. You know what? I, I've got a lot going on today. So I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to, I'm getting ready for a big reveal party tomorrow. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop and just watch this video when I have more time. Thank do you. you. Um, do you already know? No, I don't know. You don't know. It's so exciting. No. Yeah. So anyway. congratulations. I can't wait. You're going to have to send me a note. And let me know. All so right. Exciting. Thanks. Um, ladies, now you're going to go ahead and you're going to put this piece down. We're going to put it right side down. We're going to center it to the stitch, but the edge is going to be right on that stitch line. And that is your quarter inch. Go ahead and just hit start. Miss Carolyn, Lindsay, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Excellent. I got to do a little ripping here, but what happened? Oh, I, I just didn't get my, my uh, fabric over far enough. But I, uh, so is a little bit peeking through? No, I'm fine. Okay, I know mine was just, I, I mean, I barely cut on that left side. I didn't cut quite as much. Go ahead and give this a little shot of spray or just fold it over and you can just kind of press it down. Miss Belinda, how are you? I'm ahead of you for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that's good. Good, because I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to lose anyone. All right. And did you ladies here, I don't know if any were you, of you were on the live feed, but two scoops is, is going to be here next week. So if you've purchased that, I'll be reaching out to you and we're going to start that so along soon. All right, same thing on the right hand side. You're going to go ahead and do this is your placement trim line. Miss Rita, how are you doing today? Are you stitching with us? I saw you log in and out a couple of times. Hey, you're muted, so I can't hear you. That's lovely. I said, no, I'm muted. I'm working. You're working. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Well, I'm glad to watch. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and trim all this away. You're trimming to the right of the stitch line. And I'd call myself a lazy embroiderer. So if I don't have to pull the whole hoop off, I don't. Maybe it's just working. Maybe that's a uh, working smart. Maybe I'm just, no, I don't know. I, if I don't have to pull it off, I try not to pull it off, but I know sometimes it's gonna be easier for you. Something that comes in handy is gonna be double curved scissors to get you over the edge. So that'll make it easier. Okay, grab your next piece. Gonna lay that down. 
This is where I go in search of, where did I put mine? Oh, here it is. We'll lay that down. And just go ahead and hit start and it's gonna do your quarter inch seam allowance. Then I'm gonna spray and I'm gonna fold. Miss John, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Excellent. All right. I saw the preview of next month and it's really cool. Are you talking about the tea towel? Yes. It's cute. I asked them because I haven't, I don't even have the tea towels yet. I was like, when can I get them? And I haven't even heard back. I should, now you've reminded me, I need to send them another note. Um, what did you like about it? What was so cool? Well, I've never done the um, Kimberbell, um, the big pillow. It's yeah. collage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this would be an awesome intro. Yeah, that'll be perfect. That's what I love about Kimberbell Club. You can like learn a technique or, you know, something new. So ladies, we are on, that was step number 27. So we just went ahead and folded that back. Um, we're gonna do stitch the border, tack down that goes all the way around. So just hit start and color still does not make a difference. The next color does make a difference. We're gonna do the cross hatching and you wanna put in a white or you can choose whatever color you wanna put in but I'm gonna put in a white. I don't know if you saw it, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try and do um, a best of Kimberbell from Kimberbell Club, cause not everyone's been around for this whole time doing Kimberbell and they started Kimberbell Club, I wanna say in 2017. So we're going to start out with the flamingo. That sounds awesome to be able to catch some of those oldies. Yeah. So when did, um, how long have you been doing Kimberbell stuff, Belinda? I've only had an embroidery machine for just coming up on a year now. Ooh, so you would never I'm, guess I'm a baby. By your expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there were some really, really cute projects too. So we'll do some of the fun ones and I'll I'll kit them out too. And I'll try to keep our fingernail tips out of the kits. I I just it just makes me laugh. I'm glad that you laughed too, Belinda. I hope you I hope you just laughed. Okay, this is gonna do that, the quilting. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna do the quilting. So just go ahead and let it stitch. It's four minutes of, of stitching. And then after this, we're going to be doing some of the applique. We're going to put down the rind first. And if you look at um, the picture, if you need to pick out the right color, they did the rind with a light green. Um, and it's going to be a satin stitch right here near the watermelon part. And they did a decorative stitch around the other two sides. So when I did mine, I just did mine, if I can find it. But I didn't go anywhere. How could I use it? Okay, it's upside down. So I just did mine with the dark green around this part. And I did the light green right there. So up to you, however you want to do it. Maybe I'll do the light green around the whole thing. And look at, okay, so um, I just cut felt out for mine and I just hot glued it down and cut it like the shape of watermelon seeds. So um, you can decide what you want to do. It, there are no buttons in there. I mean, that's what they had on there. So if you're going to wash it, I guess you'd want something that's going to be on there permanently. But I just cut mine out and threw them down like watermelon seeds and I just hot glued them down. So just options.
is is that is bingo liam Just trying to match a, a face with a name. So after we've done the quilting, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch the rind placement line. Um, I would go ahead and change it to whatever color you're gonna use. Uh, you, you know, actually, you know what? We can leave that same color in there right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it to my green just because, and for the tack down, I'm gonna do the green too. It says color doesn't make a difference in step number 32. However, um, uh, it doesn't have a satin stitch. It's gonna have that decorative stitch. And oh, I see you're unmuted. <laughs> so this is Leanne in Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Thanks for joining us, Leanne. Okay, now how do I get me back on mute? So I'm not... Oh. I can mute you from my end, but you could, there's a, a mute, the, it should be the same button, the mute and unmute. Um, but if you want, I can just go ahead. I'll just mute you on my end. Okay. So I can Thank that. You. Nice Take to care. meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Let me go ahead and trim this and whoops, he totally fell out. He bounced. I was a little aggressive there. Okay, placement line first. I'm gonna grab, you should have that green piece of fabric and just give it a little shot of spray to the back. Of course, I've lost mine. All right, where is it? Oh, there it is, fell to the back. So I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray. If you're gonna use, use the light green, I would switch it to the light green now. Whatever color you're gonna use for the, um, this bottom part is the part that might peek through. The satin stitch, I wouldn't really worry about that, but the bottom part, go ahead and put your Watermelon rind down. You're gonna do your tack down and then grab your scissors and you're gonna trim it up. And you wanna go ahead and trim this close to the stitch line. This one's a quick and easy one. I hope everyone got their pillows done from the last time. That one was uh, that one was a longer project for sure. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. We started the morning off um, taking Momo. I would probably like hiked him maybe three or four miles, but he was not even, uh, we, you know, part of it, it's uphill. So he was not into it, kept hitting my hand, walking really slowly. Um, okay, we're gonna stitch the rind decorative outline and that rind decorative outline is only gonna go on these three sides. So just go ahead and hit start. If you wanna use a different color, you can use a different color. Um, you know what, maybe I'll do it like what they have and I'm gonna put that light green in. And I'm not worried about that dark green picking out because it's the same color as the fabric. Sir Momo's in here. I didn't even know he was here. All right, go ahead and stitch that out. So cute. I 
And then we're gonna do the placement line for the watermelon fabric. And I have this, I think this wasn't even opened in my, in my stash, but it's almost like a pinkish red. I wouldn't even call it hot pink because it's it does look pretty hot pink under this light, but this is what I'm gonna use. To find a good color, you could do a red, you could do a pink. It's nice to pick something that kind of goes with the fabric. And then um, we're gonna switch to the watermelon melon placement line. So now you're gonna go ahead and put in that red. Leanne, how are you doing? Am I going too fast or are you good? You're good? Okay, let me know if you need me to slow down. Belinda, are you still ahead of me? Excellent. Uh, Don, how are you? You're good, and Miss Lindsay? Uh -oh, Rita. Rita. Let's let Rita back in. Is anyone stitching with me tomorrow or this afternoon? We're gonna do the pillow. Sweet land of, it's gonna be Sweet Land of Liberty pillow. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the placement line. You're gonna grab one of these pieces of fabric. And if you were to do this again, you really don't have to cut them this big. You could go, I think these are six inches by six inches or six and a half by six and a half. You could probably go five by five. Five by five would be plenty. But I'm gonna grab one of these and I just put them down in this like orientation. So, and it came out perfect. It looks super cute, but I'm just gonna put it down kind of like that. But I am gonna give it a little shot of spray first. And just one layer. I love chenille. I did not love chenille when I used to do it with a nail file and just like my fingernails because I didn't know what I was doing. But I love chenille now that I have the right tools. And I'll show those to you today in case you're, you're doing it the old fashioned way. Okay, so you're gonna lay that down. We're gonna do our tack down and you are gonna trim close to the stitch line. Oop, look at that got something going on there. Let me get this out of the way. I got something balled up. And then my ticket lover. I'm going to cut that out. Trust your mama ears if something doesn't sound right. Go ahead and turn this over. Not sure what happened there. I'm going to cut out that wad though so it doesn't get all stuck. This layer is important. It's got to be tacked down well. I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna to go to the back to the very beginning of that. And I'm gonna re-thread my upper, when in doubt, re-thread. Rule of thumb, if it looks bad on the back, well, that leads me to this. If it looks bad on the top, it's usually something going on with the bobbin. If it looks bad on the underside, it's usually your upper threading. So it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. And then when in doubt, just rethread everything. Uh-oh, I'm falling more behind. Okay, Belinda, let's see if I can catch up. Jeannie, do you have yeah. the Kimber Bell fruit stand, the other uh, chenille pot holders? Um, I'll have to check. I think I had the Santa. I don't know if I have the fruit stand. I'll, I'll look when it's uh, doing the, what is this? This is just a minute of stitching. Whoops, I didn't go back. No hurry. Okay, after you do this, you are gonna trim it close to the stitch and then it's gonna do a decorative stitching around the outline. You could probably get away with four and a half inches if you lay it right down right. So if you're gonna do more of these, I would just change it in your instructions. 
and just at least go to five inches. I think I threw my scrap in my scrap pile. I couldn't, I couldn't throw it away. All right, now it's gonna do that decorative stitch. That is going to just take a minute. I'm gonna see if I have that design for you. I don't have it. If you wanted fruit stand, I could order it for you at 20% off. Um, so just let me know the one I have in stock is gonna be the Christmas one, which is pretty cute too. You could get ahead on your Christmas projects. Um, but I should get that one, shouldn't I? I should have the fruit stand. All right, that is the outline for the watermelon. Next thing you're gonna do, so that was 39, is stitch the inner rind satin stitch. So now we're gonna do this little line right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that light green back in. Patrick. Inner rind, ladies. And then you're gonna grab your three pieces of fabric and we're gonna lay these down next. So just get these, these ready to go and just have them layered. You wanna have all three of them right side up. And we're gonna be putting these down. Who, co who comes up with these? You're one in a melon. I'm not that clever. Like who, there's somebody that thinks all these little things up. I I like it. I like petty people. My my father-in-law, um, Patrick's stepdad is really, really punny. And the kids think it's so funny. And a lot of the, the jokes are really, really corny, but they just make me laugh. And uh, he's, he's really clever like that. They're really silly. Okay, we're gonna lay these down next. I'm gonna, and just make sure they're all stacked. And again, I'm just gonna stack them in that corner. And um, 
So this is step number 41. It says place three watermelon chenille fabrics right side up. You can tape it down if you want. I'm not spraying these. So these I'm not going to spray, but I'm not going to tape them either. I'll just kind of hold them in place. Um, and then you're going to stitch the watermelon basting stitch. It's going to baste around. And then the chenille lines are going to be double or triple stitches in the middle. So just go ahead and hit start. And I'm just going to kind of hold it down making sure my fingers do not get in the way. Oh, look at that. Color makes a difference. Sorry, ladies. So uh, that stitch is gonna come out. That's just the basting stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I'm gonna put my um, red, my pinkish red down. I'm not gonna worry about that green. It's actually almost nicer with the green cause I'll be able to see it. But I am going to change the color out because for the other lines, you don't you don't want those to be green. So make sure you change out to your red. And I'm not even going to go back stitches. This part's just the basting stitch. We're good. Now these stitches are going to be heavier. And once you get this done, if you're ahead of me, you're just going to trim three layers of fabric close to the basting stitch line. Do not trim the snail lines. So these straight lines, those are your snail lines. You don't want to cut those. We are going to trim really close to the basting stitch, and then we're going to remove those basting stitches. And if you have a pair of scissors and you can cut through all three layers at once, I would definitely do that. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're just gonna fluff it up anyways. I love that. Like who figured that out? That you could, that you could do layers on layers and fluff them. I mean, that's pretty darn cute. And we're almost done, ladies. We'll just do some schneeling. You can just relax and get your seam ripper ready. So get your seam ripper out because we are going to be removing that basting stitch. So just have a pair of scissors ready to uh, trim away the uh, outside of the basting stitch and a seam ripper because we are going to remove that basting stitch.
All right. I am going to slide this out for this part just to give myself a little more room. And I'm going to go ahead and trim away all these layers. And I'm cutting through all three layers all at once. And you want to cut right to that basting stitch. If you trim that basting stitch, that's OK, too. And there's that adorable decorative stitch right underneath. All right, so we went ahead and trimmed all three of those layers. Um, remove your basting stitch from directions 42. So I'm gonna put this here so you can get my camera down low. And there's my green one. That's gonna be really easy to pull out. Sometimes if it gets stitched down. Oh, oh you want me to play with you? Momo always comes to me first because in the house, the, the family calls me sucker number one. I'm sucker number one. And then my son Kai is sucker number two because I can't say no to him. I don't know. I'm a sucker. <laughs> I guess it just comes down to that. So go ahead and take out all of these stitches. Are you ladies all done already? If you're done, oop, I think I got out my last stitch. Uh, you're just gonna get your scissors. Um, for me, I have a chenille cutter. And if you do a lot of Kimberbell, it's worth getting one of these. Um, and it looks a little complicated, but it basically breaks into a couple different parts. Number one, like the width of the part that's gonna go down your little chenille channels. So this one's gonna be too wide to push down there. So there is, is it have a size on it? And it says like uh, S for small, medium, large, and LL is just gonna be like really large. And then you have your cutter selection. So you can turn your blade to these different spots 
If you turn it one way, it's just going to put your blade there. If you turn it the other way, it's going to get you a new edge. So if you have blades that you've like you've accidentally like gone over a pin or hit your your uh, ruler with it, that would be perfect to put into something like this because usually it's just like one spot that you nick. So for me and this, I usually like to do like the smaller ones here. So either the small or the medium, let me see. Yeah, so I could fit all of those. I'm just gonna do the size small. Actually, my blade is already there. I've already turned it there. You just literally take this and put it in the channel, make sure you're all the way down and you just push and it cuts right down the center. Isn't that nice? So I am cut right down the center. I guess I could use the, this one would fit perfectly. So see how it turns the blade right there. I'm just gonna tuck it in and just push. And now I get that nice cut that's gonna be right down the center. And I usually do it twice just to make sure I didn't miss a layer. Um, if you don't have a chenille color cutter, then you're just gonna take a pair of scissors and you're just gonna cut down the center. Not a big deal at all. Um, so I'm just going to do these. Got one more row. I guess it's just kind of mindless. You just put it in and push it up and then you're done. The other thing you definitely want to have, I mean, if I choose, if I were to choose one or the other, I'd go with a chenille brush. I, I couldn't do it without the chenille brush. Um, I think the instructions used to say to use a nail file and it's just not the same as this. This is just kind of like a hard bristled brush. And um, cause I could use my scissors, although I do love my chenille cutter. And then you can just go back and forth. And it just makes your chenille look absolutely amazing. And then if you have a lint brush or you have some painter's tape, you can pick up all these stray threads, get right to the edge. Was I supposed to chenille already? I was just so excited. I just started. Who, does, who doesn't love chenilling when you have the right tools? Um, Yes, so step number 46 is fluff chenille with a nail file or chenille brush. And then we're gonna return this back to the machine and we're gonna do the black lettering. And the more you chenille, like mine is pretty roughed up because I just I just love it. Um, so you can't even see like the pattern. You don't have to rough it up as much as I did. You could leave it where you could see some of the, uh, some of the fabric underneath. I just, I love the way it feels. And this is where I go. Patrick made me really angry yesterday. And I just get out of my system with my chenille brush. And I just love the way it looks and I love the way it feels and you can come on from, come at it from any angle. And the chenille brushes are cheap. I wanna say they're like 3.99. The chenille cutter is uh, a little bit pricier. It's like $38.99 or something like that, but you do get 10%, 20% off. So you can just send me a note and I'll get that for you. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? So I'm gonna pick up whatever I can just easily. And I'm just gonna grab a you know, the other thing you could use that's really nice is if you've never used one of these, this is Pam's sponge. And this is great for picking up threads. It's just like, there's all these wonderful products. I bought these for this store because um, I was on a website and it said they're top sellers and these were on there. So they just, they just like grab all the threads. So why not? Why not have all the tools that are going to make your life easier? Okay, I'm just going to blow this off. While my hoop is out, I'm going to change my bobbin thread. So I don't change my bobbin thread a lot, but if I have black writing, then I mean, sometimes you just get a pinprick like, like you, you see it from the pinhole. So just to save yourself that frustration of seeing white thread peeking up through your black um, stitching. The other thing is 
I look at these and I go, okay, do I need to use a 60 weight thread? Does it need to be more defined than this? And the writing's kind of thick. So I'm just gonna use my regular black thread. But if it was really, really fine um, and, and the lettering was really skinny, I would definitely put in a 60 weight thread, but this is on the fatter side. I'm just gonna leave the regular, 60, uh, the regular 40 weight. Yes, Belinda? I used my regular thread and I'm only doing the four inch. But where is it? Um, oh, gee. The, writing, the writing is perfect. Yeah, so it was fine for the four inch too. And you yeah. just used your regular 40 weight? Yep. There you go, ladies. The first time for me where I was like, ooh, that doesn't look good, was I was doing, we did a challenge in the store and it was a Disney princess um, quilt. And it was the eyelashes on the Disney princesses. And it looked like I had used super globby mascara. It was just, it was, it was pretty ugly. And that was the first time I was like, wow, that didn't look good. And, um, and I, I went and I bought a whole set of, uh, of 60 weight thread. And I rarely use the other colors. I use them every once in a while, but I use the black and the white and, you know, the basic colors. So we carry fine line in the store if you did need something like that. So put in a black bobbin if you have one and just go ahead and stitch out the lettering. It's gonna say you're one in a melon. Jeannie? Yeah? If some superior thread is called the bottom line. Is that uh, 60 weight? So that would work. That would totally work. Yes, you can do that. Yeah. So you should have a piece of ribbon in your kit. And it's just going to be their gingham ribbon with the lace trim on it. And we're going to go ahead. This is what we're going to lay down next. Um, you're going to fold this in half and you're going to put uh, wrong sides together. Doesn't have to be this long too. I think I changed my, um, my supply list. Did I put it in here? So they had us cut it to six inches, but I think five inches would have been, been fine. And we're gonna put this in the corner. The other thing is when we go to tape this down, I tape mine up further because um, it's going to, I put it so that the, the ribbon hung off further up this direction because this outer stitch line is where it's gonna stitch. And I didn't feel like I needed a super long hanger. So you can decide how long you want it. I had mine, mine's kind of like this. Maybe you want it longer, but it's gonna get stitched into that top most corner, not down here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this down. I'm just gonna use some transport. 
my favorite. And you just need to decide how much overhang you want. We're gonna tape it up in this corner and you want it so the folded edge is pointing in. And you know, if you want it to be two inches, you could do something like this, but just kind of center it on that corner. I'm gonna take tape outside of the stitch line. We're getting ready to put down our, um, our back pieces. So if you line it up with this corner and this corner, and I'm gonna just put a piece of tape right outside here. You could put the piece of tape on the inside too, whatever works for you. And um, it says, place trim in top edge corner of the project with fold towards the center of the project, tape trim in place with tape outside of the stitch area. And now we're gonna lay down our back pieces. And they have you put down, they want you to overlap them an inch. So they had you put down the top one first and then the bottom one it really doesn't make a difference. Make sure you have the folded end facing in, not the raw edges, but the folded end. And I'm just gonna put this down right here. And I'm gonna put this one right here. So here's the folded edge and they want you to overlap it about an inch. So just flip it back and make sure it's about an inch. The other thing is you make sure this edge is covering the stitch line, it's gonna stitch on there. So I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. That looks good to me. The other thing is you don't want your foot to get caught under here when it's going around. So you might wanna put, and you don't have to put a piece of tape covering the whole thing. I think that's a little overkill, but you want it covering where the stitch is gonna be and my stitch is gonna be right here. So that's where you wanna cover. And if I fold back this side too, it's gonna be right here, right there. So I'm gonna put my tape right there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and slide it back in and it is gonna do an outline stitch. If you wanna tape the edges as it goes around, you can do that too, but I am not going to. And I'm just gonna go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna change out my thread. So I still have the black in my bobbin. I definitely don't want that because I don't want any shadowing. So I'm gonna put my white bobbin back in. I have a green one up here too. I'm gonna use my green. It's just sitting up here. And look, it's the perfect color begging to be used. All right, ready? Let me go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna try and get my camera to roll up a little more. There we go. And we're gonna do the outline stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of hold my fabric down. And we're gonna go ahead and trim this up. You might wanna press it too. I'm gonna turn on my iron. The other thing, if you have some uh, steam -a seam either the quarter inch or the half inch, I did use that to kind of seal mine up and I can show you how to do that.
All right, I'm gonna slide this off and bring it over here. Here's my favorite rotating mat. So if you don't have one of these Martelli rotating mats, you should get one. I'm gonna pop this out. Let me look at my instructions, make sure I'm not leading you astray. So we're gonna remove the project from the hoop. We're gonna trim all layers, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance, and we're gonna clip into the corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a rotary cutter. I think I brought one, brought two. And a quarter inch. You just want to use scissors, you could just use scissors. It's thick right there. And then we're going to clip into those corners. I like to clip like double clip. So I like to cut like that and then cut like that. Right. Are you done, Liam? You look like you're done. Are you super speedy, girl? And I'm like, ooh, it's so cute. I love it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn mine inside out and poke those corners. Oh, you know what I forgot? Hang on, let me grab the tape. I can feel the tape as I'm turning it. So get rid of your tape. Was I holding everyone back today? Was I like so slow? Hopefully not. Maybe you're just here to like stitch with friends. We'll just call it stitching with my girlfriends. Okay, I'm gonna turn this right side out. I'm gonna grab my corner turner. Don't be too aggressive. I mean, how many times have you been too aggressive with your corner turner? I know I have been. And uh, I've gone right through the corner, like OESD, my corner turner is here somewhere. I have the OESD one, it has two ends. And I have stopped using the small end because I've just blasted right through the corner. And that's always the worst. I'm gonna go ahead and poke out those corners. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this. I'm gonna press it from the front side first. I'm gonna use a little best press. I love best press. Ooh, 
Mother's Day is coming up. I give this to Patrick's mom. Okay, if you want to seal it up, what you can do, because I don't know why we would want to uh, turn this the other direction again, you could use a little bit of um, steam, uh, steam a seam, and uh, we carry this in the store in the quarter inch and the half inch. So you just kind of leave it in here. It's like a little dispenser. And I'm just going to cut it to this length. So one side's gonna have the sticky stuff on it. And one side has the paper. I'm just gonna lay it down right in here. And I'm gonna press it down like this. It's not gonna be sticking to this. There's a paper side that's up. I didn't press right on it just because sometimes some of the steam seam from the other side gets on the top part. And then you're just going to peel back your paper and it should be it should be adhered. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And then I'm just going to press it down and it's a permanent bond bonds permanently when ironed. And then it is sealed. There's so many great products out there. I had a gal come in the other day and she's like, I don't want to sew my curtains, but I want something that I can use to um, to baste it up. And so she just got a, a you know, a thing of this steam of steam. So she's just going to fold it over and just press it down. And then we are adhered. And now you can go ahead and you can add whatever you want to this. The other thing that I like to do and the other product I love are these. Um, and I use my side hoppers too, but I've been using these more. This is from OESD. So you're gonna wanna come in here and trim all your jump threads. And you can just kind of scoop it under that thread, flip it on the right, and then I flip them over and I clip them on the left. Makes it so easy. And if you're like me, I'm just a maker. I've always got to be making something. So now you have this and this can be a great gift for somebody. You can just put it in your stuff and it's look, I don't know, it's super seasonal too. It'll look great for the summertime in your kitchen. I don't even know if that's supposed to be clipped. I just get clip happy. Is that one supposed to be clipped? So that's it, ladies. And then you can add whatever you want to the top. If you want to put on um, buttons, um, if you want to put on buttons, you should probably do it. You should, before you seal it, you could kind of sew those on so you're not going to see the thread through here. Um, but like I said, I just went ahead and I used a little bit of felt and I just hot glued those down. And they're super cute. Any questions? Now, well then, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll send you the recording of this class too. And I think I'll see some of you this afternoon for Sweet Land of Liberty. Have a great day, ladies. May I ask one question? Yeah. The soup, the two scoop. Did yep. you order extra? I Are ordered extra. Order? I, I have, um, I think I have maybe 10 extra fabric kits. Um, in the store, I have maybe five extra designs and embellishment kits. Do you want me to put a set aside for you? I don't know. I keep debating. What are you going to do as far as classes? We're going to do a sew along. So I think I'm going to get my fabric kits. Maybe let me look at the calendar. I'll probably get my fabric kits. Today's the 6th. I think I'm going to get them on the 10th. So we'll probably start our sew along. I'd say on like the 20th or the 23rd. And it's going to be pre-recorded. It's not going to be pre-recorded. It's uh like with with all of those projects, I it's going to be recorded um, as we do the project. 
but I, yeah, I'm not pre-recording it. We're, we'll, I'm going to, I'll broadcast live. Like I'll do a live feed and we'll okay. stitch it out together and then it'll be recorded. So if you want to watch it later, you can watch it later. Okay. I'll be in touch. Okay. Let me know. Okay. All right, ladies, have a great day. And I hope to see some of you this afternoon. Bye. Bye.